जश माते जी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेट एस ऑल बो डाउन टू श्री माते जी रेजा मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन श्री गणेश मंत्रा Thank <laughs> you. 
In this meditative state, we will now hear Shrimataji's speech. Dawn has already spoken so authentically about self-realization that some of you must be wondering uh, what sort of a gimmick we are up to. But one has to understand that only a person who is there can talk that authentically or a person who is a complete hoax. It has to be two extremes. A person who says maybe, may not be, perhaps, uh, it is so or somebody who sings about his separation and his pains are definitely not there. Because if you have met the truth, if you have seen the reality, then you speak like Christ. I am the light, I am the path. You speak like Shri Krishna. Sarva dharmanam parityajya mame kam sharanam praja. Means give up all the religions. Religions means outside seeking and follow me. The authenticity comes from the feeling or we can say the feeling of authenticity itself. Unless and until you have achieved it, you do not speak like that. Your language is different. Like <coughs> many, many poets and many even devotees of God have sung the song, Oh God, when are you going to meet us? As long as they are singing such songs, then you should know they are not real isos. But we have lots of poets, you to have Blake, we had a poet like Kabir. Many poets like this have sung the song where they said, this is it. You better come up and have it. And all such people who have spoken like this are the people who have achieved it. We can say in modern times, Khalil Gibran, I'm told you people study, he was one of them. We can say Zen is also the same thing. There are so many people who have said this. Muhammad was the same. All these scriptures which are written after these great incarnations on this earth, all of them are saying the same thing that they have achieved it and that you have to achieve it. All of them say that you are to be reborn. I do not know how in any religion people have given up this idea of being reborn. Nobody has gone to the seeking of it, especially when they have organized religions, they have never bothered to find out what is it talking about. It is talking about a rebirth even, even in the Bible. Not going to church, coming home and saying your hymns and finished. That can never, never satisfy our spiritual urge which is much stronger, much more stronger than these kind of little bits of foods given to us. Unless and until we have achieved that goal, we are not going to be satisfied. We have to understood ourselves and we must have our self-esteem. At least that what we are wanting is the reality. But there are lots of gimmicks on, uh, you know there are lots of shopping centers on, which I have to talk about, which I hate to talk, but I have to tell you about. That people are selling these things. Everything starts selling. If they find out there are people seeking, they try to sell it. You cannot sell your evolution, can you? How much did you pay to become a human being from a chimpanzee? And 
how much are you going to pay to become something higher? If it is a living process, you cannot pay for it. Anything that is living does not know money, does it? Except for human beings, if they are living. I don't know. Once they start knowing money too much, they also deaden completely. They also become extremely materialistic matter itself. You cannot purchase it. The first point is. Secondly, you cannot put in effort any effort in it. They'll say, stand on your heads. By standing on your heads, can you sprout a seed? Some people might say that, all right, we'll give you a lecture on this. What lecture can you give to a seed to sprout? It is a spontaneous process, meaning it's a living process. It is with you born. That's why it is called Sahaja. Saha means with, Ja means born. It is born with you. And if it is going to work out, then you must have some experience of yourself, some knowledge of yourself, and your power, your power of yourself should manifest. For some people are trying to fly, for example. Now, are you going to become birds in next evolutionary process? Or some are hopping like frogs. Now, are we going to become frogs? We must think about it. What are we seeking to be? Some people are trying some other tricks like there's somebody who says that by doing sex you can achieve God. I mean, it is nonsense. Animals are doing that every day. Are they higher than us? I'm not saying that I'm against it and all that. Whatever is natural and sacred is all right. But the way people are trying to exploit you through your brain, through your emotions and through your baser needs. If you have to go higher, means what? What is going to happen? Let us see what psychologists have to say. Jung says that there is something called as universal unconscious. From where you get universal symbols in our dreams, and that is how we know that there is someone who is guiding us. Of course, people don't accept Jung, they want Freud, because that suits you better. But what Freud has given you, just think of it. He himself died of a very bad cancer. If he had achieved anything in his own lifetime, you would have shown it. But we do not see the life of a person who preaches. Even I've seen people who talk about their gurus. Recently there's a guru in, I don't know where he is now, he used to be in England. He, they found out that he drinks whiskey more than the Scotchmen do. And he has five, six keeps and mistresses. Still they are following him. He said he is above all sins, so what does it matter? And they are all becoming above sins like this, you see. So, we should not be in delusion about ourselves. If you are really seeking and if you are really wanting it, then it is going to work out. It is going to work out first for the people who are of that caliber, not for people who are not of that caliber. If you have come here to sort of find out what sort of a lady is this and all that, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot work it out. You have to come here with the idea of getting it. For one thing you should know, you are not paying me anything. It is you who has come to take something from me, I am not going to take anything from you. I have come to give you something. So the question of examining me and judging me does not come because there is no shop running. You see, our mentality is that of a purchaser going to a shop. We'll see how it works out and that and that. Here nothing is selling, first and foremost thing. Secondly, it is a spontaneous process. It is the cashing of the check, as I say, of all your good deeds and of your past life and your seeking. If you are a true seeker, it works out. It works out despite all mistakes people have committed. I have seen some people who were supposed to be very much gone down. Some people came to me in coma also, got realization. People who took to drugs and were absolutely in it have overcome it and are beautiful. Because all these things human beings do because they are bored of themselves. Mostly it is done because of boredom 
or sometimes because of the fashions around, everybody is taking, let's try. But actually, human beings that I see are nothing but their spirit. Their sparkling spirit in their hearts, which is so beautiful like a diamond. I see that. I see the clouds that cover it. I see you otherwise also. But I know with my love, I'll be able to remove those clouds. Now these people who are talking about God and organizing religions and also people who are talking about giving you something uh, like realization and every sort of word that I say they must be saying. I'm sure about it. They have used all my language. When I went to America first, you see, people told me, Mother, you better get your lectures registered or something like that. I said, why? They said, they will print this and they will use this, they will write books. I said, very good. Let the ideas move. But can they give realization? Let them speak about Kundalini. But can they do it? It's a good idea, very good way they are really propagating my ideas to people. It's easier that way. Let them do it. And that's how the market is full with all the same words that I'm saying to you. But actualization of the experience, raising of the Kundalini is only done by a person who is authorized. Any Dick Tom Harry cannot do it. Now you may say, why you mother? Now what to do? I can only do it. For example, if you have a professor, say, of mathematics, he's the only one who can teach you mathematics. You don't feel bad about it, do you? I don't know that. I don't know even how to drive car. I don't know how to reach Cambridge, even to direct it. So you know so many more things than I know. I know only one thing, and that is you are your spirit, and that you have the power to become that. These are very simple things of life, which I know, and if I know that, for that why should you feel hurt? It's my job. It's my job. I have to do it. And that's why I'm doing it. And one people should understand that there is someone, there can be someone, who does it out of love. Need not be for anything. Just for love's sake. Because love is the most powerful thing. You have no idea about love. We have never used the power of love so far. It's all power of hatred. All your nations, all your organizations are nothing but handful of people who hate each other. They form a government, they form a, a democracy or a communism and this and that nonsense just to fight. They don't know the power of love which is the most dynamic power. The pure love of God, the divine power of love is all pervading. Now, whatever I am saying, I am going to prove it to you. I am not just telling you a story. It is going to be proved and you are going to find it out, whatever I am saying is true or not. You are going to also find out that you are that spirit, that you are that beautiful thing I am taking. And once you achieve your spirit, you become collectively conscious. You become, again I say, I am not saying you have to become, we are all brothers and sisters, you just become. It just happens in your awareness. It just enlightens your awareness in such a way that you start feeling another person. Now, as the things are today, we know there are many diseases, we do not know the cure of that. For example, cancer. Cancer is a disease people are really frightened of. Now I must tell you, I've been telling this for 10 years and I've done the curing of cancer that Sahaja Yoga is the only way cancer can be cured. There's no way out. You have to get your Kundalini awakened. If you do not get your Kundalini awakened, maybe you might be a prey to some of these forces. Maybe the physical problem Maybe the mental problem, because there are these evil forces let loose. They are around this mass hypnosis that took place of the children. Nobody can explain, but I know that. So many people committed suicide, you know, in uh, which country was that? Guyana? Yes, all that was nothing but the same. Psychologists are still children and unauthorized. They do not know what people can do on your minds and how things can work out, how these evil forces are working. 
On one side is this, the another side, your projection of your mind, projection of your brain. So-called rationality without wisdom has no sense at all. You rationalize, everything is rationalized. What's wrong? Even killing your, your own mother, what's wrong? Can you explain? It goes on like this, whatever you do, what's wrong? At the most you'll go to jail, all right, it's all right, but nothing wrong in it. With rationality you can rationalize all kinds of wars and everything, so the other projection moves, your brain projection, which is linear, moves like this and comes back onto human beings. All these big civilizations you have created and these big advancements you have made and what has happened, people are committing suicide. For example, we had some people from Sweden, young girls, a 17, 18, oh, studying in Cambridge, I must tell you. They were studying in Cambridge, they came to Caxton Hall, and their vibrations were so bad that I had to call them at home, just like dead bodies. I said, what's the matter with these people? Young girls of 17, 18. I called them home, I talked to them, and I found that they were planning all the time how to commit suicide. Seventeen, eighteen-year-old human beings who are created after thousands and thousands of years of work, so delicate and beautiful. And what they are doing is nothing to commit suicide. But now I'm told Switzerland is competing with Sweden, which is supposed to be the most affluent country. So what is happening with your advancement, you must also have a little rethinking about. Is that going to give us happiness? Is that really going to solve our problems? We are running away from it. We are running away from it. Why? There must be something wrong in this. And what is wrong in this is that we have not paid any attention to our spirit. That is the source of joy. Today you find thousands and thousands of people are seeking amas. Of course, some are in fashion, but so many are genuinely seeking, no doubt. They may seek it in drugs, may seek it in gurus, anywhere, but they are definitely genuinely seeking. Of that I'm sure. I have seen that happening. Now why this is seeking has suddenly come up on our mass level? It used to be individualistic, one or two people used to seek, say about 12,000 years back there's a mention of one gentleman going to Raja Janaka and asking him the knowledge of self. And he was put into so much of uh, testing and all that and ultimately he was given his self-realization. So why today there is such a seeking everywhere? because it was to be. Today is the time of confusion. It's called as Ghor Kaliyuga, means the blackest time, blackest modern times, where the Kali rules and it was promised that at this time there will be such a lot of confusion that people will start seeking and the seeking will be blessed and that is what is happening through Sahaja it is all being prophesized and the prophecy has to be fulfilled. Now for you people, I have to tell you about Kundalini because you must be anxious to know about it and talk about it. But the knowledge of Kundalini is something very subjective in the sense that if you come in this room and it's a dark room, if I tell you about it, uh, about the electricity, its history and the one who invented it and how it was brought to Cambridge and who started the first one, you'll get a headache. Instead of that, I can tell you, you come in and put on the light. Simplest thing is to put on the light. And if you can put on the light, you can see for yourself that what is all this going on here. Otherwise, it's such a headache to go round and round on that subject. I have seen some people have written such big books on Kundalini, most amazingly, who have no idea of Kundalini at all, absolutely zero. 
Some of them are saying, see the book is like this. Some people say the Kundalini is in the stomach. Some say it is in the brain. Some say it is in the lower portion of the body. Now, if such a thing is to be written, what others are saying, you can write even such a big book, but there is no definite thing about anything written in this book of Mr. Avon, which is such a huge thing. Now, there are so many other books also which have been written by Indians, the great, see, Indians are, I hope there are no Indians here, Indians are very good at manipulating things, I must tell you, and I am one of them. And you have to take them always with a pinch of salt. Because if they are genuine, they can be absolutely genuine. But if they want to be crooked, they can be first-class crooks. The reason is this. India is a yoga bhumi. It's a great country of good vibrations, you can say. A vibration where lots of great saints are born. So the whole place is vibrating. I mean, if you get your realization, you will see yourself, what I am saying is true or not. So in a country like that, only two extremes are born, either very good or the very nasty. The very nasty are born to topple down the play of the divine. Now, in India, people having a certain sense, you see, they have a certain sense of wisdom, I should say Indians, to understand who are the crooks. You see, because we know all these tricks of the crooks. So now they are being exported to India, to other countries. And these people are more interested in your purse, so they are not interested in poor Indians. So they are all abroad and they are very nicely enjoying their life here, which you cannot enjoy. Already they have got their heaven here and they are at your cost and they are enjoying it. But because of your knife, because of your naivety, I would say, because you are insensitive to spirituality, it happens. If you were a sensitive person, you would have known that they are crooks. You are seekers, you are very genuine, but you are extremely simple. And this is the naive is the word for that, because Indians know who is a crook. Of course, some foolish Indians may run after a man who gives them a diamond. He doesn't give to poor, he gives to a rich man a diamond. If he gives one diamond, he takes ten diamonds from that fellow by mesmerizing him. All these tricks of the trade are known to Indians, at least to elderly people of my age group. But the younger people still are westernized, you see. So the westernized are getting sophisticated and they have some place for these uh, gurus who are trying to befool them. Now for you people, I'm just telling you, that you face the truth as it is. You should have that scientific outlook, is to keep yourself open. Just see for yourself, do not deny it, do not accept it blindly, but let it work out. If it works out, you will see the results. Then after realization takes place, when the Kundalini rises and breaks the Sastrara, this point, the baptism takes place in the actual way, not through a theological college fellow, but through a real spontaneous happening, then you start seeing for yourself and you have to maintain it and you have to work it out. So this is a compromise between you and me. I am going to tell you something about Kundalini, but that also you do not take up too much seriously, you see for yourself. It would be something like this. You are sitting in this room and I say that reality is in the other room. So I said, you say, all right, show us the photographs first of all. So I show you the photographs. Then you say, all right, you tell us about it. I tell you everything about it. Still you have to go to that room. Unless and until you go to that room, all this is useless and meaningless. So even if I tell you about this, that's not the last word. This is all because you are so fond of lectures. I've been giving now 300 and I don't know how many I've already given lectures. You see, I've been lecturing. And just now I'm driving down from London straight here and another lecture is here. But, all right, lecture gives you an opening and apart from that, your rationality is little bit satisfied that Mataji can speak English is something all right and all these things. But again, you have to go to the other room to see the reality is the point. So that's one thing, is that you should be prepared to go there. Now, if you are egoistical, I'm sorry, it will show 
we know where ego is. I mean, those who are realized know your ego. Some people have even like Napoleon, even bigger than that, you see, like a balloon. And it covers their heart completely, they are heartless also. I have seen such egoistical people in modern times that history could not have produced such. I mean, he may be an ordinary man somewhere, absolutely uneducated. But he could be so clownish that you can't understand from where did he get his ego. So this modern time, especially in advanced countries, it sort of nourishes your ego. Every walk of life, you see the advertisement, how they nourish your ego by saying things. So all this works out towards ego. Now the superego is also there, where we are so much conditioned, especially in a place like Cambridge. Now you are university, you have a library, you read all kinds of books, from black magic to third eye to fifth eye, everything you have read so far. So that is all going into your superego and you have a problem with that. So all these problems are within you. Apart from your physical problems are there. Then your family problems are there. There are basic problems of not getting love from your mother, father and all these things are there. All these problems are within you and that's how these centers may be little difficult. But doesn't matter, I'm going to work it out. I worked it out. Mahamantras
We thank you, Shri Mataji, for this beautiful collective morning meditation. Let us all bow down to Shri Mataji, raise our mother Kundalini and put Bandhan.
will join again tomorrow at the same time for the collective morning meditation. Jai Shri Mataji.